college football is facing a variety of challenges. I still think that that it's not going to work. And the Pac-12 on Friday announced its plans this year to play a 10-game in-conference schedule. Pac-12 players, though, are revolting in a very professional, well-written statement that was sent to the Players' Tribune. Now, it looks like they're getting help from somebody, and that's fine. Sure. They need help from somebody. Nobody's helping these kids. They are the ones who are the pawns in this greater game of the conferences trying to salvage as many of the billions as they can. Uh, you know, hey, go ahead, throw these kids onto campus. Throw these kids into games. Let's not have the kinds of standards that the NFL has. Let's not be as obsessive, compulsive as we should be about limiting the spread of the virus. Let's go forward, damn the torpedoes. And uh, I think it's great that these players came together. They're concerned about racial injustice. They're concerned about COVID-19 safety. And they, they, they've made some very specific demands or they're, they're going to sit out the year and there will be no Pac-12 football if enough of them stand down. Now, we don't know how many players are involved. We don't know how many schools are involved. It's supposedly a group of players from multiple schools. But if they have enough sway over those schools, we could see no Pac-12 football, even though the Pac-12 plans to go forward, Chris. Well, I mean, I applaud the players of the Pac-12. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of years ahead of their time here just with, you know, the fight of, you know, equal pay or paying the players more and compensating them more that discussion. Now this, I mean, I get it. You know, Mike, I mean, I'll ask you, have I, I really haven't heard of a college plan yet. What what is their plan? How are they going to go about test? Damn know, the torpedoes! That's what I Damn, mean. You're that's right. the plan. Okay. The plan is I, let's go. Okay. That's the plan. That, let's that, go. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something yeah. because I, that's what I thought it was too. Yeah, you're right. I've heard nothing significant to go. We're going to do this. We're going to take these steps and do that, and then do this, and then you know the players will feel safe and we'll make it work. It doesn't seem like any of that conversations has happened. And uh, you know, good job, Pac-12 football players. Seriously. You know, somebody, like you said, has got to stick up for these kids, watch out for their, their best interests. And I also like the, yes, the racial injustice thing. I mean, come on, you know, don't, don't I don't even like one thing that I, has come clear to me here is, you know, racial injustice through this whole conversation and the George Floyd and all the other horrible murders we've seen here. All right. The, the one thing that has come to the top to me is we have a racism problem in our country. All it's done is expose it more to me. So from that standpoint, too, I'm proud of those players for standing up to, for such an important issue. Well, and it has a, here's how it relates to college football. You, you've, you've got a bunch of guys, uh, mainly black young men, who are lured to come play college football with this vague notion that they're on their way to play in the NFL, but the reality is a very small percentage ever get a check to play football. They get an education that in comparison to the value of what they bring to the table, it's a joke, and they're starting to realize it's a joke. And one of the things the Pac-12 players want is 50% of the revenue, of the gross revenue, goes to the players of the sports that generate those revenues. And look, that's going to hurt some of the non-revenue generating sports, but you know th this, this corrupt system has been hiding in plain sight for too long where the players don't get nearly close to the value of what they generate, what their sacrifices are, what their abilities dictate, and the system just keeps taking billions and billions and billions, and they'll spend on these lavish facilities, and the athletic directors make a ton of money, the coaches make a ton of money, and the players don't get anything. And, and see, when the virus first hit and we started projecting what was going to happen, I said if college football isn't, isn't careful here – they're going to expose yeah, this, I remember this you said fiction this. that it's been based on. And people are going to start to realize, look, this, this is all about making money, period. It's not about providing student athletes with a full and complete college experience. Baloney. It's about making money, preserving the golden goose, and doing whatever you have to do to do it. And the end result is these schools that are obsessed with playing – college football, and the money that comes with it, they're going to open the campuses. Each campus is going to become a super spreader locally, and the virus is going to rip through the community and kill vulnerable people. And uh, uh, hopefully hopefully, people wake up and realize it. That's why we talked about this Friday, Chris, Peter King and I. The Big Ten has told its members that they may not play this year. The Big Ten gets it. The Big Ten recognizes this may not be sustainable. And while these other conferences – SEC, ACC, Pac-12 say, damn the torpedoes. Big 12 still hasn't said what it's going to do. 
the Big Ten is looking at very seriously the possibility of not playing at all because they recognize right. it may not be the right thing to do for their kids, their kids' families, or the people who live in the communities where these schools are. Yeah, no, I, I mean, and that that's the, the approach that should be taken by these people of leadership. But, and Mike, I remember you said that, and you're right. I mean, just the more time that's gone on, it, it seems that it's slowly starting to expose itself. And it's all, like you said, just, you know, full steam ahead. We're playing football. We're playing football. And you're, I, we haven't heard one ounce of a, a plan or how they're going to test or keep people safe. And, oh, you're going to have, what, the kids there and not the, the football players at school, but not the students there. I mean, that will expose itself, too. So we'll see where it goes. I'm still in the – there's college football is not going to happen until late fall, winter, somewhere like that. I just don't see it going on. They're talking about playing Ohio State, Michigan in September, October, given the possibility by the time they get to November, it will have all fallen apart. See, that's the thing. They're going to go forward, and it's, it's, it's the NFL's let's see what happens attitude, but with less of a cohesive and comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's just not going to work, especially in the areas where the virus is still out of control and it's not getting any better in a lot of those areas because people still aren't taking it seriously in the areas where it is out of control.